evening, I would like to call the Wednesday, August 9th, RTCC meeting to order. Our first order of business, um, welcomes and introductions. And look to you, Nika, to kick us off. Okay, great, thank you. Um, are there folks there too? Lance Only Lance. Lance. Oh, hello Lance. Um, <laughs> okay, so my name is Nika Oaks and I am the new director of RTCC. Um, and it would be incredibly helpful to have all of your names again, now that I'm not as nervous. <laughs> uh, Sam Hooper, uh, resident of Brookfield, work down here in Randolph. Thank you. I'm Ashley Lincoln, I work in Randolph Center. I live in Randolph Center and I work at Gifford. Okay. I'm Sarah Hoff and I'm a representative for Randolph. Thank you. Uh, Nathan Wright, I live here right in Randolph and I work for the Radio Vermont Group. Nice. Thank you. All right, um, are there any petitions to come before the board? Hearing none, we will move, um, I think go directly to you, Nika, again for the staffing update. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to let everybody know that uh, staffing is going, as I can see it, really well um, at RTCC. We had several openings and in the last three weeks we've been able to fill or be in process to filling several positions um, and currently the only position that I do not have at least um, a viable candidate for is um, the paraprofessional position um, in the special education department. So I'm very excited about all of the new people that have come on board. Um, I'm very excited too. We've got a really nice group. Will you just go over the programs that will have new teacher leaders this, yes. this year? Yes. So um, some of these people, like I said, are still in process and have not been fully hired yet, but um, we have, you want me to say names? Just say the name of the program. The name of the program. Automotive, diesel, health careers. Um, what else am I missing? Pre-tech. Thank you, pre-tech. Uh, we also have a new curriculum coordinator, a new school counselor, and two um, teacher's aides uh, that'll work throughout the building. And I think that's new math and new. Every, oh my gosh! Right, that was a and while ago. New because there's there's that's a, right. additional mm -hmm. staff with a lot of additional. Thank staff you. Sure. Yes, that was a couple of months ago, and I thank you. I completely of them. forgot. Yes, so we have um, one new math teacher and two new English teachers. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. So we will have two math classes, two English classes. But mm -hmm. our math teacher from last year is staying, so just one of them is new. Just to clarify. So we basically uh, cut the cut the teacher to student ratio in those two fields mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Yeah. but we had we had talked to because you're actually doing really well so mm -hmm. but we, we had talked there, there in, in previous times about the fact that one of the pieces where the state is taking a look at the CTE centers mm -hmm. is kind of basic skills for students, you know, making mm -hmm. sure that they've got those foundational knowledge in, in those areas. And it's, it's weak across the state, it's been weak here. And so they are recommending increasing the number of poor discipline teachers that we have, which is the purpose. So in, in the old days when we just had the one math and the one ELA teacher, Right, if you got 143 students there, they've got that full workload themselves, and that's not going to be an effective way for them to be able to connect and communicate. Cool. Um, so yeah, you, you hit it exactly on the head. They cut, cut the cut the student to teacher ratio in half, and hopefully yes. it's going to be some really good impact. And our curriculum coordinator is going to be working very specifically with looking at each student's levels and deciding instead of just them being in the overall math class or the overall ELA class, they'll be looking more at or do they need a more advanced curriculum or do they need to learn some basics. Um, and that will give sort of a range of um, opportunities for students to, to move throughout that as they grow and change um, and also to have uh, teaching that is appropriate to where they are at their level. So that would be nice. Yes. I would say you can just keep on moving Just right keep through. moving? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Um, Robin, the piece about current and enrollment, do you have the current? Yes, I remember. can pull that up really quick. Thank you. Sorry, current enrollment. Sorry, current enrollment for like overall. Thank you. Okay, so yes, our current enrollment is 160 students right now. 
Thank you, you for that. Break, is it broken down by each program or just under the 160? Do you want it broken down by each program? Okay. Yes. Okay. You're okay. Is there, any, <laughs> okay. is there any program of concern that doesn't have enough bill that we should be looking at? Not at this time. Perfect. Thank Are you, you full? Not at this time. Okay. How <laughs> many spots? <laughs> like all together, we'd have to count all those. Oh, um, okay. I mean, if we just we look can. briefly, auto is full. Okay. Um, auto is full. Auto, ag, and video are full. Auto is full. Con just just kidding. <laughs> auto is full. Construction currently has six students. Criminal justice has nine. Culinary has 11. Dental has seven. Diesel has 13. Digital film has uh, 19. Diversified has 17. Um, education services has seven. Electrical has 10. Um, health careers has nine. Manufacturing and fabrication has 14. And pre-tech morning class has 11 in it. And pre-tech afternoon class has 12. So, programs can have 16 sorry yeah I'm sorry for speaking no, it's correctly okay. um, so that's what I'm curious like with your overall cap 16. 16 right so I just didn't count all those programs so how many students can you have in total in I mean, your facility yeah. what's the difference between so count up your number of programs oh. multiplied by 16 16 times 12 yes so there's 12 programs that's why yes. I just didn't yeah. know yeah. Okay, okay thank you then yeah. I can do sorry. the math myself that's <laughs> well, 12 yeah but there, then students you could then pre -tech feasibly well. have another 32 and on half day program in oh. pre-tech feasibly but so those would pre-tech they count as half thank you that's what I was thinking 192 as students half. if every program had 16 okay and then pre-tech would be 12 in the morning 12 in the afternoon Okay. And you said we're currently at 160? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Historically, um, of course, COVID was a little bit weird. Um, you know, going way back, you know, 130, 135 were, were good years. We had a couple of years that were like 143. Um, so, you know, 160 is a healthy yeah. compared, compared to what, what we've had in the past. Um, typically, we, we start out a little bit higher. It'll, it'll mm -hmm. drop a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's, if it's in the 155, 157 range, um, that's a really, really good year for us. Yeah. Thank you. I'm wondering, um, are you going to be accepting any more students, or is that just the number that you're starting off with at the beginning of the school year? Are there any um, more students that just come between now and then? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Did you have something you want to say? No, oh, okay. I do. Oh, okay. I agree with you. Oh, okay. We're just trying to be protective. Right. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, let's see. Any other questions about enrollment? No. <laughs> um, the next thing that I wanted to uh, talk to you about and is in that packet that I gave you all. Um, unfortunately, it's not in the. It's not the first thing, so you have to go to the last item, um, the RTCC cell phone expectations. Um, so new this year, we have purchased these clear boxes. Um, they're about 11 and a half by 10 boxes, um, and they have locks on them. And so they're like a bike lock, like the kind that you do with your thumb. Um, and so they're clear, so you can see through them, but when students come into the room, we're gonna ask everyone to put their phones into the box, and then the teacher will close the lid, it will be locked, leave it on the desk so students can see their phones because sometimes students get anxious if they can't see where their phone is. Um, but it stays there during the learning time and during class time. They get their phone back um, when they change classes, so when they're in the halls walking to another class or when they're at lunch. Um, but the classrooms are treated just like any work uh, situation where your phones are away and quiet. Um, so that is new this year. Um, so I'm just going to read the cell phone expectations here. Um, all students are required per RTCC school expectations to place their phones in the clear locked box provided by their classroom teacher. Students may access their phones during lunch and passing times only. Non-compliance with this expectation is a level two violation on the RTCC rubric titled refusal to follow phone expectations. Any student who violates this expectation will receive the coinciding consequence on the progressive discipline rubric. And I'll go over the rubric with you in just a moment. Um, but I would like your feedback on that. And I'm wondering 
how you feel. I applaud you for this. It's bold. Um, I agree 100% with what you're doing. My only concern would be, are you ready to set parent expectations and I, and make sure we're ahead of it that they know you, you're not going to text your kid during the day and he's not going to or she's not going to respond. Right. Right. So not till passing time. I agree lunch. with this 100 percent because mm -hmm. I think even in the real world, in the workforce, this is a big issue that I've seen a lot with businesses in Vermont and throughout the country mm -hmm. that I deal with. Um, and it's setting good expectations and focus for the students. I just want to make sure we're ahead of the curve with the expectation of the parents that are sending their kids here. Well, that's a really good point. And, and to that point, I did uh, send a um, letter to parents good. and I outlined the expectation and I talked about the box. Hopefully yep. it's understood by parents, but it was in the letter. Perfect. And, and it will be in other things <laughs> as well. And with the reasoning that I hear a lot is, well, if there's an emergency, I need to get hold of my mm -hmm. kid, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. So do you have those procedures in place where if there's an emergency, it's clearly lined out how the parent can get hold of the student and that? I think we, that. we're going to have to go old fashioned on them and say, call Absolutely. the school and we'll find your student. We Perfect. know where your children are. Good. I just want to make sure that's yeah. very clear. Like, yeah. You know, like, Thank you. We've oh told them in the past as well, but right. a lot yes. of times they still just reach them by phone. We've struggled right. um, in the last year with kids just texting their parent and say, I'm sick, I want to come home. Mm -hmm. And the parent calls and says, my kid isn't feeling well, they're going home. Well, have they gone to the nurse? Because protocol in the school is they go to right. the nurse first. Follow protocol and do so that. they right. need to see the nurse before they're permitted to go home. So like right. we've had to have that conversation with parents several times. And I think this policy also brings up what Ashley brought up in the last meeting is more accountability. Um, being held more accountable not only students but parents that send their their children to the center so I really think that this is a great step in the right direction personally. thank you yeah. I appreciate that feedback and I like to we're not taking it away all day nope. they can check in between classes and yep. see if there was some sort of family emergency that could only be said through a text message they'll see it and and then yeah. you know if, should they have an emergency of course it's in a clear box, can, it's yeah. in their reach, it's exactly. just not accessible. And I think that's a great compromise to make sure nothing's gonna happen. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, I would say I fully support that. I think that's great. Um, just be prepared for when you get one parent who's mm -hmm. ready to rock and roll. We've seen this exact topic hit national headlines in Florida, DC, and, Pencil and uh, Philadelphia. So it won't, it's not like no one's pushing back against it so um, just have those ducks in a row I think okay. but, um, yeah. and I don't know what the emergency procedure is if there was a lockdown or a shooter in on the premises what we what? probably wouldn't have time to distribute the phones <clears throat> but the thing is about the phones is parents aren't supposed to be calling students phones anyways because it interferes with the police and everything being able to communicate with the school and it mm -hmm. causes chaos yep. and parents show up where there shouldn't be parents in the middle of a situation so it actually would help in, mm -hmm. in an actual lockdown emergency in an emergency the first priority is the children's safety right Absolutely. Not, not if they can get hold of their parents right um, yep. so make sure they're in a safe spot and that you know exactly yeah. keep some keeps the the people in the classrooms or wherever they are hiding, um, aware of what's going on around them, right? If you're on the phone, you're, you're less aware. But it also, usually when the shooters are walking through the hallways, they're in a little bit of a heightened state. Um, they're not quite rational. They are drawn to noises. And so if people are chattering on the cell phones or the cell phones are clicking and beeping, and then that's going to attract attention. Um, so yeah, it's good. It's probably even better that they're out of their hands. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. I think this is great. I wish this was in place <laughs> a long time ago. I think it's fantastic. Um, my question, though, is are your colleagues in the field and their adherence to this um, consistently in the classrooms? That is my expectation, and that will be followed up with by me if the teacher decides that they're not supportive of this. But I don't see that being That's great. a problem. It's great. Thanks. Thank you. I have a question. Um, sometimes students will go out in the field, so wondering are the cell phones going to be left in the classroom when they're going on? I imagine that they're going to take the box with them. Okay. 
Great. So it's, it's totally yeah. portable, not it's, too heavy. It's very small. Okay. Yeah, it's, it really it's big. Is. It's, it's, it's as big as my aid box. Yeah, it's like oh, as big okay. as my computer. So mm -hmm. I think there's no reason why the box couldn't go with them. Great. I think it, it even has a handle, if um, I remember correctly. But you bring up a good point. Does that include smartphones, uh, smart watches? Because you can access your phone through your watch without it actually being. It on needs your to include that. Thank you. So we got to make okay. sure that this policy includes any smart devices that are connected to the phone. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. Yep. Okay. I had not thought of that. I'm going to get a lot of hate email for bringing that up. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I won't put that it was you. But, it, but, it, but it's, it's nice put to it share. Through, it's yeah. nice to share. Yeah. No. It, uh, you make I, a good I just, point. I, I hadn't I, thought of it. I don't have kids or anything, right? I mean, <laughs> I know how that works. So, yeah, I would put smart watches or any connected devices to your accounts on your phones. Also go in that box. If it, and it sounds big enough to hold, it would hold watches. And Thank you Perfect. for bringing that up. Yeah. Yeah, and the other choice is they can leave it at home if, or in their car. They sure can. Yep. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Good job. Thank you. Um, okay. So from there, the attendance policy or expectations, not policy. So yep. Yep. that is the page before the last page. All right. So um, I hope this makes sense and is really clear, but let me know if, if you find it confusing. Um, so I began with this. I began this whole process with the unexcused absences because I, I believe those to be the biggest problem. Um, you can have 18 absences unexcused before you are um, no longer a student at RTCC. But there are many stop gaps before that so that we can hopefully um, mitigate this from happening. So at three unexcused absences, we will make a phone call home and send an official letter saying that your student has now had three absences, unexcused. At five unexcused absences, they'll have a meeting with their school counselor to see if maybe there's a reason why they've been absent so much. A phone call home and again, a letter sent to document that they're not five. At eight unexcused absences, they will no longer be eligible for the National Honor Society or eligible for work-based learning going out on co-ops. Of course, we'll call home and send another letter to document. At 12 unexcused absences, they will meet with the entire team, all of the people that work with them. So myself, the school counselor, if they have a 504 or an IEP, that would be Christy Arguin their program teacher, and anyone else that may work with them, such as their math or ELA teacher, um, or a paraprofessional that works with them that we may invite, their family, um, and the student. Then we would send notification to the sending school. Of course, we'd make the phone call home because that's how we're getting everyone here, and then send a letter home. At 17 unexcused absences, we're meeting with the entire team sending notification to the sending school and a letter sent home and that is the last stop gap before the 18 unexcused absences which would result in excusal from RTCC and loss of all credit. They wouldn't be eligible for recognition night or s and sending schools would be notified and the final meeting would happen with administration before being um, requested to return to their home school. I think that this is a very forgiving amount of unexcused absences. I think it's too much. I kind of <laughs> do too. And can I just interrupt real quick? Go ahead. There's certain classes that have a waiting list or people that didn't make it in. This is a long time to figure out someone doesn't want to be there or another kid could really benefit from the program. It is a long is, time. Is this a state mandate or is this our own mandate that we set? The previous, last year, we allowed 22 unexcused absences. So this is a cut from that, and it is the maximum, I believe, Lane, when we looked it up, the maximum allowed by the state of Vermont. So the, 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 with the state of Vermont, what it says is that students can't miss more than 10% of the total number of days in mm -hmm. high school or at, at, at RTCC to actually have it count as them earning credit for a year. And so the 18 is about that 10% mm -hmm. mark that's here. Um, it certainly can be more restrictive. Um, there was a discussion um, a little bit in terms of 
the idea that here we are, you know, we're trying to prepare students for the next stage of their lives. This is the um, students a lot of will be going out in the workforce. What does the workforce expect? And shouldn't we be setting, you know, standards and expectations that coincide with what the workforce is going to expect of them? So she, I don't um, know a workforce. Nick has been doing a good job of that. But that would allow 18 okay. unexpected no. absences and still be employed. Um, I don't know. I mean, you're shaking your head not too actually. So no. usually, what, usually 10 in private, right? Yeah. <laughs> One no, unexcused absence. <laughs> Three strikes out, kind of thing. thing. I mean, I'm talking like, about total absences. Yeah, usually right. it's, you get ten sick days. I mean, yeah, yeah. things happen, you know. But mm -hmm. if you're a regular absentee, like, I, for me, RTC is getting kids ready for the workforce. Right? Yeah. It's going out. You're going to be in a trade. You're expected to be there. Work's being booked uh, with the expectation. Accidents happen, people get sick, we get that. But, you know, 18 unexcused absence is a loss of revenue for our company. Um, yeah. So, yeah. my question is, and 18 absences is a long time to figure out that the kid doesn't want to be there. Or, or, you know, so is it like we go down to eight and then we start contacting the school? Hey, Williamstown, South Royalton, Rochester, wherever. We've already got eight unexcused absences in the first month or in the first two months. We, this is a waiting list to get into this class. I would like to contribute that I think that every time a letter is sent home, the sending school should be notified. It, I think that's fair. Uh, I mean, Documentation. Yeah, documentation. And it will also give the sending school the sense that they're being included in the problem. Well, you know the stigma of tech schools, right? Yep. For years. We're trying to break that stigma. This isn't a place you send kids that don't want to learn. Like, we want to is a different type of learning and we want to build that culture and foster that interest but at the same time we don't want we're not here to send troubled or un, uninterested kids in the trade just for a place to go mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right this isn't a place for kids to go this is this is a place to grow in a trade and become valuable outside of school so are we saying that expectations with the schools that send their kids here that eh, we're tightening the reins because we're really focusing on what's beneficial for the students that are here. I'd like to respond sure. to you because I, to, I'm going to be very honest and say that my first draft of this had 10 absences, um, like you're saying. And, um, and in a conversation with my husband, who is an educator, I said, do you think 10 absences is too little for, um, for being excused from school and not being allowed to come back and he thought about it and he said I do because we have a mental health crisis going on with kids and there are kids who may feel like um, like they're they could be being bullied or they could be very depressed or maybe they have a parent that they rely on to get them to school and that parent is unable to get up in the morning and get them to school in those cases, if that was a situation, 10 absences could happen very, very quickly, and we may not fully understand the, the difficulty that that student is facing until it gets to a greater extent. And being a, a licensed school counselor myself, that really appealed to me because I know that there are people that are struggling with things like that, and so on. I then wanted to extend it. Excuse, though, and um, I was just going to say that only with a doctor's note. It, only with a doctor's note. Yeah. So again, and I and I understand. I'm not saying it's right. And and, and, saying, and and my compassion side's like, oh God, I feel for those kids. Me too. But taking my compassion and my personal feelings to the side, mm -hmm. what do we want to set for expectations of RTCC? We don't want to not support those kids. But after 10 absences, that, you know, I think after eight, you got to look at a pattern and be like, okay, what's going on? And then start your investigation, right? Like, really get mental health professionals to come in somehow or, or have that connection to really start talking to the student and be like, what's going on? Are you having a hard time getting to school because of transportation? Because you don't have to get into family. Like, <coughs> what is your obstacle sooner? Because then we can maybe come up with a plan like, do you need a bus route? Do you need a ride? Do you know, be more progressive earlier on how to help the child instead of waiting until 12 or 17 because they're already suffering for, and they're already so far behind in the class. I mean, they're really far behind after right. five or six. 
We're talking unexcused, like not doctor's appointments or having mono or getting COVID right. or anything like that. We're talking unexcused. After five, they're probably, they're already a week behind class time. Mm -hmm. Like, should we jump on it sooner? Mm, like a bigger meeting. Sooner, like at eight. Sooner. Like, do we do well, the- At five, we have a meeting with the school counselor and that is the point of it, is to find out but what- But do we bring in the parents on. at that time as well? Mm -hmm. At five? We certainly could. Be like, hey, we're just concerned. Mm -hmm. Here's our expectations. Here's what we're trying to help your child, like, set goals and expectations, right? Like, we want your child to graduate and be ready for the real world and get out there and be successful. We've already got five unexcused. We just want to open a conversation mm -hmm. and just move it down. That's my thought. It's just thank be more you. proactive. I don't know what everybody else. I'm curious about other thoughts, and I thank you for all of that. Yeah, no problem. Has, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I agree. Um, I also think we should take into consideration that they are still all children. 100%. So yeah. um, I think, yes, um, 18 is a lot, but we have to think about, um, you know, it could be on the parents' end as well right. and not holding the student 100% accountable for something that may be going on at home because they are still children. Yeah, that was my, like, real concern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just if they get a ride to school and their parent is not able to drive them for whatever reason, and then they get well, there's every, from here. It's there's every little thing that's not so cookie cutter, right? Like, yeah. Oh, my, my mom's car died and <laughs> we can't get here. But being that we have that conversation at five, mm -hmm. okay, can we help in some way? Mm -hmm. More of like a early concern, check in, check -in mm -hmm. help. But this gives the opportunity for the administration to approve an absence like that's, that's based true. on neglect or homelessness that's true. on yes on towards their, the bottom toward the bottom so yes. excused would not count on this rubric is that correct excused right. does not count on the rubric it, excused absence no it doesn't count no we just haven't made it down to the i haven't gotten past that so it's just part. the unexcused mm -hmm. yeah right. if you didn't meet the definition of what's excusable then right. Right. this is the category right Maybe I should continue with the parts below Sorry, it, ahead, just yeah. and maybe that will explain a little bit more. So um, at the asterisk there, it's two unexcused tardies and or early dismissals will equal one excused, unexcused absence. And then we have here attendance along with other professional skills will be assessed in every program and will impact rates. Both excused and unexcused absences impact credit attainment. Please be present on time and attentive. Examples of excused absences from RTCC would include a medical or other required appointment with an official note required, a religious holiday, a court date, bereavement, or other reasonable absences as approved by the administration. So my car broke down on the way to school and we needed to wait for AAA would be one of those reasonable absences approved by administration. Quick question. Yes. What is considered a tardy? Is coming mm. in at two in the afternoon and getting out at two twenty <laughs> right. a tardy, <laughs> or is that a full day of missing? So Good that's point. that's skipping a whole bunch of classes. Mm -hmm. So that so, you've but missed is that the tardy day. nine o'clock in the morning when class starts at eight thirty? We when haven't gotten that far in discussing, but I would say no later than five minutes past the start of class, um, okay. something around that. But I do need to discuss that okay. further. Perfect. I mean, some of our teachers in the past would take attendance right at 9 o'clock because that is when class started. And so anybody who came in after 9 o'clock in those programs was marked tardy because that is how that teacher felt. Um, other teachers wouldn't take their attendance until 9.15, so Linda and I would see people come by at 9.05, 9.10, and we would write them down as tardy. But then when the attendance was taken and it came up, when the teacher took attendance, they were in the classroom, so they weren't marked tardy. So does that need to be a policy? Right, yes, we will have a specific mm -hmm. time that will be, the yeah. attendance All must teachers. be taken by this time. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. I think that's... Vermont defines that a minimum of four hour day to count as a day. Four hours. Four hours, would be, like okay. if you try to have a half day, yeah. you need to have four hours. Okay. There's also language in there for a minimum per week, but let's just yeah. stick with that. Yeah. Like, um, as a great... <clears throat> Do you have to eat lunch as well? No, they, they usually just call that. Um, you can... I would say, you know, if they're not here, probably by 11, 
that's that's a full day. Mm -hmm. You come in, like but innocent. but the but then the problem that you get in doing that is if the kid comes in at eleven thirty and is getting docked for the entire day, they're going to say, "Screw it, why do I come in at all?" Mm. So there's that that balance point. Um, yeah. So if the kid comes out at eleven thirty, is it going to be more of a distraction to the classroom than if he doesn't come in for the whole day and disrupt the other students? That's a hard. Yeah, but it's it's kind of funny because the rules rules can dictate what behaviors yeah. you can expect. So if, if a student knows that if they come in after eleven thirty, they're not going to get credit for any part of the day, then the majority of them are going to say, "Then why bother coming in at all?" Mm -hmm. And that's already. even if it's excused. Uh, no, not excused. They're a different ball game. Okay, okay. just on excused. So Tur turning from tardy, you know, right. at the at what point in time does the tardy turn into basically a full day? A full okay, day. yeah. And will you check to see if taking away work-based learning is allowable under Act 177, which gives students access to flexible pathways for learning? Hmm. Like, is it allowable to take that away? Okay. I'm not sure if, I, I don't know. So I'm asking. 177? You, Act 177, it's like flexible pathways, multiple pathways to learning. It's a whole big Vermont Act. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Did you, Did you ask um, Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> This is in draft form, right? Yep. This is in public. Okay. Um, I guess in my hearing of the different concerns in the room, I like kind of the left half of it um, with maybe a little bit more engagement uh, with parent and counselor involvement earlier on. Okay. Um, I think the 12, 17, 18, if you were to shave each of those by two, I think you'd get into a, mm -hmm. I think it would be it's more appropriate. 16. Yeah, so it'd be 16, 15, and 10. So you run, a, you run a business, if somebody is chronically absent, at what point in time are you going to tell them? Right, so that's, that's the, yeah, that's the big question. I, You're I, talking unexcused. By un the yeah, unexcused for me it would be depending on the value of the employee, um, would be six or eight. Um, you know, people have their stuff, but obviously the pandemic has upended a lot of that um, and created a lot of wiggle room. So I guess I'm in favor of being more rigorous on the latter half, um, maybe shave it by three. Um, but I also recognize this mental health issue. I recognize the inequities in enrollment and you know family dynamics. Um, if one person, well, and then you get into excused absences, and somebody can call AAA each time or figure that figure out how to game that system, then that's a whole other thing. So. I, I think getting a little bit more rigorous on the second half of it would be good, um, and a little bit more involvement on the front half, to Nathan's point about uh, waiting lists and just people's eagerness to, to be in the learning environment. Thank you. It might not be a bad thing either, but it just might be that automotive wasn't, it's not their thing. They're, just, they're not engaging, they don't want to come to class. Okay. So is that a is that an issue? Is that like it might oh, be. it's not what I thought it was? Mm -hmm. Okay, well let's get let's get ahead of it. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a good reason you know in the way that this was modeled for the check-ins that, that they developed, and that's so that you weed that stuff out. You know, right. is 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 the kid getting bullied and not telling anybody? Is that why they're not showing up? Is that you know is that why we've got an excused absences? Are they not um, engaged in the program? Do they have something horrible going on in the home life that nobody knows about? And nobody's helping them with. You know, those are the things that can get revealed when those conversations happen with the students. Um, you know, if they're, they're broached in a, in a good way, which I know they will be. So, yeah. so I think we've had some really great conversation, and I my two cents on this is I think the max should be 10 okay. um, as unexcused in that, again, um, these groups, these classes are very small and intimate in size with 16 students. So I'm going to assume that there is going to be a real quick understanding from those teachers as to the, the students that they're with. Um, and the involvement could happen much earlier on with that student if they foresee an issue. 
I think you've done a nice job rounding out your program with having more resources within the technical center um, where there's going to be people who can quickly react if there is an issue. Um, in my opinion, if you put this in front of a student and they see 18, they're going to go to 17. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that that is only setting um, not only the program up for failure, it's the other classmates who are showing up and are engaged and are trying to actively uh, receive an education that's going to set them up um, because I'm not scared until I hit 18. Mm. And you said the exact same thing to me this morning. I mean, we have had so, students in the past who have been like, oh, okay, so I'm only at 14 absences, so I've got like three six or eight more that I can go. I've right. got plenty of time. Like, I'm not even worried about this. that's a culture of people coming into the workforce. How much ETO do I have? Oh, I can just, okay, I got yeah. two hours. Okay, I'm not there so, yet to the write up. Okay. I, I think you've been given, um, uh, really, this is a gift in that you get to start with a clean slate on mm -hmm. at the end of this month when you welcome students into the technical center mm -hmm. and you're setting the stage that these are the expectations moving forward and have that very clearly documented like you have done but i think it needs to be stricter okay thank you and i also encourage talking to the teachers and getting feedback too. that will happen um because i think a lot of people are like man 10 i'm ready to jump out my window at, by time I hit 10, you know, like really get a, because you want your employees happy too, right? You want right. to find that balance where you don't want to have turnover in staff. So, you know, get feedback from them too and just kind of see where they're at. That will absolutely Perfect. happen. I definitely wanted to hear your opinions first before, you know, to pre present my best yeah. Uh, version. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Did you want to add anything? No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for all your feedback. Um, okay, now, with that being said, here is our proposed behavior rubric. Um, so, uh, with this rubric, uh, the point of it for me as um, the person that will be handling the discipline in the school is to um, have a very clear uh, way to discipline students um, without having any bias or any uh, unexpected consequences for the student. This will be given once complete and, and uh, perfected to families. It will be present within the school. Teachers will have it and students will have it. They will be able to identify the action that they did and locate the consequence that's associated with their action without me having to give them the consequence. They will be able to identify it. Um, so for an example, level one behaviors, I gave some examples so that people can kind of understand what does a level one behavior look like. Um, being inappropriately dressed for a program, like coming in with sandals when you know you need steel toe shoes, something like that. Um, being late for class or having inappropriate interactions with other people within the class or interrupting the learning process, like someone who just keeps yelling out. You know, those basic things that you see in a classroom that, that disrupt. So the first offense is just going to be a conversation and processing with the present adult, whether that adult is the classroom teacher or it could be the counselor who's coming to do some SEL. It could be that the teacher was absent and it's a sub. Whoever that is is going to con have a conversation and process with that person. And it's their first offense, so it's not getting documented. It's just a conversation. If it happens again, they will create an incident report made by the person who witnessed the event and then have a conversation with me. If it happens a third time, they will create an event, uh, an incident report made by the person who saw it happen, a conversation with myself and the school counselor, and then I will call their parent or guardian um, and discuss what's going on. If it happens a fourth time, we'll again make an incident report. We'll have a conversation between myself, the student, and the school counselor, and the parent and the guardian will meet in person with me. Additional consequences could go along with all of those things, such as in-school suspension, required community service, potential lunch detentions, or potential removal from RTCC, depending on what the situation is. So that is level one. Level two, we're looking at things like drinking and possessing energy drinks in school, any kind of a safety violation, excessive swearing, skipping class, vandalizing, 
recording or photographing others without their consent, refusal to follow those phone expectations I talked about with the box, inappropriate use of the school property, or refusal to follow any of the directions by RTCC staff. If they do it the first time, they're gonna have a conversation and process with the adult that saw them do it. They're gonna then have a conversation with me, and then there will be other consequences that will be determined by me. So those consequences, there's a whole list, and that's basically many of the things that I just read, the ISS, the OSS, the community service, lunch detention, <coughs> meeting with outside resources, police involvement if necessary, drug and alcohol counseling. Um, depends on what the situation is. And it's progressive, so it gets more serious as the number of offenses go on. You get to your second offense and you have all of those same things except that you're going to have a parent and guardian phone call and meeting as well as a meeting with me. If you do it a third time, there's going to be other consequences to, as determined by myself um, from my menu of consequences being appropriate to what the situation is and the fourth offense. And it will go progressively through. So if it's a fir first time offense, we're gonna look at it a little differently than if it's a third time offense. This is the third time we've had this conversation. We've documented it three times. We've talked to your parents this is now what's going to happen. But it won't be a surprise to the student because they will see that it's moving in such a way that there will be a more severe consequence. And then finally, level three is on the last page. No, it's not. I'm backwards, it's not on the last page, sorry. Um, any bullying, harassment, a safety violation, vaping, use, distribution, possession of drugs, vapes, or alcohol. Um, verbal or written threats to the safety of the school, including the students and staff, a repeated interruption of the learning process, physical fighting, disrespect to adults, and repeated inappropriate behaviors of any kind, theft and plagiarism. So again, this is progressive um, with all of each consequence being laid out by the number of offenses and with the addition of the additional possible consequences. At the bottom you see um, the asterisks. If multiple actions occur at once, the consequences will be based upon the highest level infraction. Reports of bullying and or harassment are subject to additional consequences, and the RTCC director reserves the right to amend the final consequence decisions. Can I make a suggestion? Yes, please. I would move vandalizing to level three. It's okay. a very illegal thing to do when you're outside of school to vandalize yep. public property. Mm, good point. I would say the level ones are right on point with the offenses. As you get to level three, I wouldn't give them so many chances. Well, let me ask oh. you a follow-up question. Yep. Vandalizing could be something very dramatic, like spray painting a wall, mm -hmm. or it could be writing your name with pen on your desk. So that is why I put it in two, because it depends on I guess it's the destruction of private property, and you'll have to do different levels of vandalism. If you're ripping off bathroom stalls and making it unusable for other students, mm -hmm. that is a lot different than yeah. LG, heart, exactly MG on a desk. Right. But it is a different series of vandalism. So maybe we just need to be... Maybe minor and major. Yeah. Mm. If you're okay. vandalizing a student's car on the parking lot, that's a lot different as well you know like different absolutely things, different levels so maybe yeah noted. just make that thing um and the only reason i'm worried about the fourth offense third offense and even like and the second offense on level three is i'm thinking of the people that are getting hurt if yep. there's mm -hmm. fighting mm -hmm. are they not going to want to come to school because this kid has another three chances to oh so out. they wouldn't have another three chances so let's say someone hit another student okay they would have an incident report by the adult that saw it. Um, they would have a conversation with me and the school counselor. The parent and guardian would be called. They would come in for a meeting. And then you see other consequences as determined by RTCC director. They would have five days out of school. Okay. That would be the other consequences, which is in the last column, the ISS, OSS, community service, all of those things. So That's where I would tack those on. Possibly on first defense, it should say, which may include removal from the program. Yeah. Like expulsion could happen on the first offense if it's serious if enough. It's, right, if it's right. serious enough. Okay, so that so, is that's other consequences and then removal from RTC. Right, but what you I'm saying is. You want me to actually write it there? If they knew that on the very first offense that was a possibility, 
it takes away a misconception that you ha you'd have to do it four times to be removed. Okay. Such as removal. Got it. And I would even say anything with drugs, alcohol, fighting, vaping, safety violations. I wouldn't hesitate to get the police involved just as a enforcement. I. And I would say that this is what's going to happen in the real world if you do these things. So I'm not saying they have to be arrested, but just getting them involved and explaining to the yep. people, like, this is not okay, like, and this is why, and, and really mm -hmm. strike fear, but educate these kids that are, that are doing that. So I want to be cognizant of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I also want to point out that this has been a very good process. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what an advisory team is supposed to look like in the sort of discussions that they should be having. Mm -hmm. Very so helpful. That's, yeah. Um, Thank you. And so, you know, that's hopefully going to become more and more the norm. Um, this team had always existed, um, but across the district, you know, it was one of the focuses last year for getting the advisory um, councils at every school so that they could have these discussions as they're touching good. on these thorny topics that are really important. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, really good job. I have made all, all the notes that you have suggested to me, and I will make those corrections. Um, and I really appreciate you being here and just listening. If you have any um, concerns that you want to voice to me, please feel free to email. I'll just throw in two cents yeah. really quick. I'd get rid of fourth offense on all three levels. I agree. Um, and I don't notice cheating anywhere in level Ooh, three. It, it is plagiarism. See, plagiarism. It's plagiarism. Is, would cover. Would cover everything. Yeah, because okay. you would be plagiarizing someone else's answer. Yeah. You, you could, could just do that. like a dash cheating, just for, okay. to make it clear, if you know what I mean. Yep. Academic cheating. dishonesty. But I would agree with Academic. Sam, and I would remove fourth offense across I'd, the board on I'd all back of them. That up. Yeah. Okay. Strikes. Okay. Nice. Thank you very, very much. And you think Good job. Thank you. We'll make those edits. Appreciate Thank it. you. I think this These is all great. Yeah. Yeah. On level two, in additional consequences, it doesn't list any additional yeah, consequences. It's a copy. It's a, it's a type. It is a type. Yep. So Thank you. We should that. still do consent agenda for last minutes and then close out. Yeah. All right. So in your packet, we had the May 10th minutes. Um, are there any corrections or edits? Hearing none, I'll take a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. The minutes are approved as presented, and there's no further business. We will close and look forward to the next meeting. Perfect. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.